Hey wanderers, prepared to wander out in the woods today. If you're a bushcrafter, a survivalist, a prepper, if you're getting ready for the zombie apocalypse, you may be looking for a good knife. And this may be the one that you need. Stick around, it's gonna be a good video. All right guys, so I'm out here, out in the woods, and I want to show you a knife that I just got. This is the Ontario RTAK2. Now, this knife um, is, I believe, the predecessor to the Ezi Jungless. Um, it's been on the market for a while. It's new to me, I've never had one. And we're gonna be taking a look at this knife today and running it through its paces a little bit, doing some chopping, wood processing, and just having some fun with it and going over what I think about it. Now, as this knife sets right now, this is not stock. Uh, what uh, I've done with this is there was a coating on it um, that comes that way from the factory and that's been stripped and the blade has been blued and then of course added this uh, custom lanyard. Um, all this work was done by my friend Z with uh, Grizzly Blades, um, which has turned this knife into an awesome, awesome looking blade. And I think it's gonna definitely perform well for us today. Also with this knife <coughs> is um, a custom Kydex sheath. Now I got this knife on the secondary market um, on a forum. Um, so when it came up for sale, I was interested in it because it came with the custom sheath and also came with the, the stock sheath, which is just a nylon uh, material sheath that's Molly compatible. But I really like this sheath. Um, and a good Kydex sheath, of course, is gonna cost you anywhere from 35 to 60 bucks online, depending on where you go. And so this came with it. Price was definitely fair in what I was looking for. And I saw a lot of potential in customizing this knife and making it my own and making it better. And um, <clears throat> of course, Z, he's been a lot of my videos lately. He did an awesome job uh, modifying this for me. Did a great job. So let's run it through its paces, see how it does on wood. Of course, this knife is a chopping knife. I mean, it's it's a 10 inch blade, uh, high carbon steel from Ontario Knife Company. And of course, with a blade this size, it's naturally going to be a chopper. This is a, a dried grapevine. Cut through that pretty quickly. Still wet on the inside, so not completely dried out yet. Cutting through green wood pretty easily. Just the weight of the knife hitting 
this green wood is breaking it um, as I'm cutting it. Because there's definitely some heft to it. I think this is like two pounds somewhere around there. And that's what that's listed on the website. <clears throat> Found some nice downed wood. It's got a pretty big splint in it, but um, it's not punky. I had to use my saw to actually cut this into a length to bring back to this part of the woods. So I think what we'll do is we'll cut this into a length that we can baton. don't have to worry as much about how you're aiming and get a little wild with it and definitely this thick blade gives you something to pound on which is super nice on that split You just got so much area, surface area, to whack so you can hit in the middle. And when you get down into the wood, you can go out towards the end a little bit, but since you've got so much length, you have some room to work with. You're not worrying about hitting the tip of your knife. And there's enough room in the back. But you can hit that too, so now you're evening out the blade as it goes down, a few whacks on each side. And actually, this wood is really wet down here. It's, um, you can feel that it's not as dry as the other stuff I was pounding on. This is kind of where all the water has settled into this wood down on this end. So we're not going to use that because that's not going to be any good for anything. So I got my wood sectioned down a little bit. <clears throat> See if I can get this apart so I can create a base.
I want to do now is I want to get these littler pieces, even smaller if I can. Of course, when you're batoning, it really helps to have a good base. Pounding into the dirt is not the best. Um, as you can see, it just drives the wood into the ground. If you have something to hit it against, like another piece of wood, of course, not a rock, um, gives you something to work with. I would prefer a larger log, more stable platform. I gotta work with what I got. <clears throat> you don't always have the luxury of having the best wood. This area that I'm in is really a lot of scrub. Um, it's on the edge of a field. There's really not much big woods in this area right now I'm in. It's all scrub. So you gotta find whatever you can that's down, down to wood. That's a good big piece, that should be good. Now I've handled um, a junglist before. I think I even owned one at one point in my knife collecting days. Um, and it was, it's definitely a formidable blade. Um, I believe it's very comparable in specs to the Ontario. Pretty much the same size, uh, close to the same weight, but the big difference is the Ontario is almost half the price. Um, and I don't think that should deter you from buying it. Um, I'm definitely a big fan of Ezzy knives, have lots of them, have had lots of them, enjoy them a lot. Fantastic knives. But sometimes you need a budget knife. And you know, this is under $100. This is in the $90 range, I believe, $89, $90, something like that on Amazon. and. Some of the other knife sites. Now the edge on this, when I received it, it's pretty decent. And as you can see, it is shaving the wood. It's making curls. It's a little unwieldy doing this finer work. And that's why with these big knives, um, I feel that you really have to have um, a smaller knife with you as well. You, you know, we always talk about one knife solutions um, in these survival situations. And, uh, you know, if, if I have the presence of mind to take a big blade with me, I'm also going to have a smaller knife with me as well something that I can carve with, I can do game processing with if I have to, food processing, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's just uh, planning, good planning. So it's doing some of that smaller stuff. It's not terribly efficient at it. Um, it's definitely going to take, I think, some practice with this size of blade uh, doing this kind of work. But if you take your time, you can get some stuff stripped off. And if you have enough time, you can make yourself a pile. Now it looks like the sweet spot for that that task is right down here because that's where I have the more, most control. If I'm up here, the knife 
tends to slide around a little bit because I can't control it as much. But if I'm down here, close to the handle, definitely, there we go, get some pieces shaved off. Really like the lanyard loop. Very, very nice addition to a big blade. I think one thing with this sheath, um, with this sheath you can carry this on the small of your back or on your side and run, and these ones snap, and then you slide that through your belt. Um, but this size of knife, I think I would want uh, maybe uh, like a baldric kind of system where it could hang by my side. I mean, this big a knife I'd probably just put in my pack. I don't think I would probably carry it that much. Um, but it's good to have options, you know? And I think definitely if you, if this is something you're interested in, uh, the Ontario, you may want to consider looking for a custom sheath maker because the nylon sheath, it's just, it's marginal. There's nothing nice or super nice about it. It's not very fancy. Um, it'll get the job done. It'll hold your knife and it'll serve you, but um, having a better sheath like Kydex is definitely the way to go. <clears throat> and then, you know, just talking about the whole gun bluing thing of a blade, um, you know, you could obviously leave the paint on it that it comes with. Um, I just like the the smoothness and the look, and of course the gun bluing protects that um, that high carbon steel. Um, uh, slows down the rusting process, prevents it, it protects it. Um, one thing that he did do when he was uh, customizing this for me is he left the paint uh, on the edge where the steel meets the handle. That way, that is protected um, always. Um, and you don't have to worry about anything getting down in there and rusting that part of the blade. So that helps protect it. Um, and it just kind of blends right in. You don't even notice it. Now, one thing to note is the spine, um, it's not, it's kind of sharp, but it's not, it's not completely a 90 degree. Um, we can test it out here on the fire steel and just check it and see if it does anything. Another little custom job Grizzly Blades did for me. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, yeah, the spine is sharp enough to strike fire steel. I would use a bigger fire steel with this big of a knife. I have bigger fire steel, so I may, um, if I carry this knife, I may have to switch out fire steels, but it did work. So that's good to know. Because um, the less stuff you have to carry, uh, the better. And I don't typically don't like the strikers that come with fire steels. They're usually crap. Um, I'm gonna use the lanyard. See how that feels. This is a pretty thick piece of wood. This is, you know, inch and a half, maybe, inch. This is green wood. It's hard to get a good angle on this. Gotta bend this down a little bit. weight of hitting it and broke it. Oh, that's really a good test. Come over here in the smaller piece. Let's see if I can just get it with one whack. Oh, that's tougher. Oh yeah, that's bouncing a little bit. There we go. So, you know, <clears throat> this is just a quick video to show you this knife and um, hopefully I get out with this a little bit more. It's starting to get dark out here already, losing light quickly. 
Um, so I'm going to start packing up here, but I wanted to show you this beauty that I got and show you the amazing customization that you can do with these. It's always really cool to find um, an inexpensive blade and then customize it to your liking, to your needs, and kind of make it your own. Um, you know, you don't always have to go with what's stock and what's out there. There's, uh, there's all kinds of different things you can do, and this is just some of the things that can be done to a, uh, a budget chopper like this to make it even more awesome. I mean, this, it's, just, it's such a cool knife. It looks awesome. Um, it performs well. Blade held up very well with what I did, which was not a lot, um, but um, you know, time will tell how this thing lasts. But you know, the only thing that I noticed really um, getting used to is the comfort level with the scales. They're they're kind of bulky. Um, probably should be using some gloves uh, just to help with some of that um, traction and comfort. Uh, especially in wet weather conditions but for a knife that you can throw in your pack um, as kind of a, a combination blade that can do splitting chores and chopping uh, even use it as a short machete to get through brush uh, this is definitely a great option out there for you you don't have to spend you know the nearly two hundred dollars on the bigger more expensive um, jungless um, this is just a fantastic option. In Ontario, they make great knives. They've been making for a very long time. They're a very reputable company. Oh, I really like this knife and just, um, I like it more because it's been customized by my buddy and it just looks awesome and it's fun to play with and uh, to use. Definitely gonna be using it on a lot more trips this year. Um, so you'll be seeing it more videos for sure. Uh, it's gonna be going in my, one of my packs. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, please like, subscribe, share. Hit that bell notification icon down below so you get updates when the new videos are released. Check out uh, the Facebook group and Instagram. Those are growing, always extra content on those. Um, and if you wanna help support the channel, um, I did set up a Patreon. I've never really done that before. I don't know a lot about it. There, um, there are some extra things that come along with a, a Patreon um, sign up. And then also check out the Etsy store link down below for patches and stickers. Um, that helps support the channel as well and gets me out here recording more videos for you guys. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time on The Prepared Wanderer.